tarot tells a story. It tells the story of who you are and how you relate to the life you're living. With each card, you're invited to explore a lesson to be learned, a new perspective, and consider an option that hasn't yet been considered. The tool that is tarot is typically used as an aid to investigate a current problem or future possibility, but it can also be used to help you remember the moments in life that made you who you are. Tarot can help you look back at the decisions and lack of decisions <laughs> that created the present you're currently experiencing. In this summer's issue of our virtual, our digital Stay Magic magazine, which is totally free, by the way, the topic is the great remembering. And it's about remembering who you were born to be, but also about remembering the road you took to get you where you are today, because that road is oh so important. I talked to members of Team TSE, our teaching team, our team here, to choose the tarot card that they felt most embodied the energy of a micro death. So these moments in time where something had to be put to end to move on to the next part and the stories and wisdom to be learned from those moments in time. After or before reading th through the responses, if you're if you have the magazine in hand or listening to me talk about them today, I want you to think which card for you represents what might be an ending, a little ending that is my it's micro in that you keep moving forward, right? And don't really stop to acknowledge what has come to pass. That's what the great remembering is about. And that's what the issue of Stay Magic is about this summer. Tarot helps its users to unlock the words that they're holding inside. So what does your inner self want you to know? And what card are you thinking of when you think of these moments that are endings to make way for new beginnings? And I'm sharing the cards that our team chose in today's episode of the podcast. We know that you were born magical. We know that you are intuitive and we know that you are brimming with everyday enchantment. Here at the Sisters Enchanted, we believe in intention, we believe in intuition, and we believe in everyday magic. Welcome in to the Expedition to Soul podcast. Welcome in. I'm Sarah, founder of the Sisters Enchanted, and we are sharing with you this summer, or I'm sharing with you, episodes that highlight our Stay Magic digital magazine. So it's totally free if you don't have your copy yet. And the topic this summer was on the great remembering. So remembering not just who you are, but how you came to be who you are. And one of the topics that we're going to explore further in a future episode is that of the micro death. So we're going to get into that another day, but today we're going to talk about the tarot cards that our team members chose to represent micro deaths for them. So I actually have the magazine. I'm going to get it so that I can keep an eye on what all of our team members shared and not forget who shared what, <laughs> but I'm going to share mine first. So just a highlight about this micro death concept. And again, we're going to have a whole episode on this and it's in the magazine. If you want to read it, you can just download your free copy at any time and read it. But a micro death are these little endings, these little deaths. They could be to pieces of who we are or relationships or jobs or, you know, expectations, how we thought things would be and how they were. And the idea is, is we don't stop to mourn them because we look at it as just like another thing, something that happened, something we need to move forward from, just keep on moving, right? Uh, but what happens when we don't stop to mourn those experiences is we don't close the loop on them. We don't see the beginning that's presenting itself. And we don't acknowledge everything that came to pass to bring us to where we are in whatever moment in time you find yourself in. So for me, I picked the Eight of Cups as my card that represents this energy of sort of a micro death for me. And I think it's because I look at this as having to move away from something, right? Like you're literally having to put your back to something and move toward a different future. And if that doesn't, in my opinion, <laughs> scream new beginnings, micro deaths, I don't know what is. Um, there's definitely a sadness sometimes to looking to the future and moving on and taking that next step. But it's also a time that's riddled with possibility, which I think reminds us that there is there is 
shadow and there's light in everything, right? There's dark and there's light, there's loss and there's love at the same time. So for me, I picked the eight of cups as my card that represents kind of endings, um, a new beginning, the next thing forward. All right. Which is interesting because I'm a wanderer in the expansion archetypes. And so that opposite of that would be the dreamer energy. Um, and it can be challenging to put things, leave things behind. Right. And so I think that I would find challenge with that water energy for sure. All right. Anna, Anna's my co-founder at the sisters enchanted. She's our head of student experience. She's a mythology buff and a tarot reader and astrologer and helped write our astrology curriculum, you know, all, all sorts of things Anna is. And Anna picked the nine of wands as her card that represents a micro death. And Anna said that this card for her points out that a micro death is needed, like that you're seen in those moments, those nine of wands moments where you're burying your battle scars, you're exhausted, you might be grief stricken, um, and you just can't shake the weight of all that has come to pass, that you realize that you just can't continue to carry on in that way. Um, and that you've got to let some of that burden go right in order to move forward. So it might not be easy, but with small deaths come the bigger victories. So with leaving some of these small things behind, you make space for the next big things to come. But if you don't do that at the nine of wands, what happens? The 10 of wands, where you end up really carrying everything, the whole load, um, there. And the nine of wands is your moment to see, I have to make a change. So Anna looked at this as this identifying moment that something has to change, which I love. That makes so much sense. Um, Jenna, she is our student uh, support person in our customer service inbox. Call her sometimes our inbox mermaid <laughs> swimming around in there. Uh, and Jenna brought the three of swords as her micro death card. Um, and she said, it's the, the micro death at your core, the heartbreak core, the heartbreak card, um, painful separation loss in any form, right. Uh, is represented here in the three of swords. And Jenna says that it might only be for a moment, but in order to heal and grow and face that pain, right, we've really got to bring those shadows to light because the swords are about perception. They're about thoughts. They are about that shadow aligned with the element of air. Uh, and she's reminding us that through this card, when we look at these micro death experiences, that they're so challenging in the moment, like nothing feels harder in life. But when we rewrite the story that our mind is creating around it, we'll find that we're stronger on the other side. So that was the card Jenna picked, the three of swords. And I love her reminding us of the stories and that we're stronger on the other side. Kim picked, oh no, I'm going in the wrong pile. Kim picked the 10 of swords. Kim is one of our student support team members and is uh, acting as a student concierge sometimes, helping bring on new students and just floating around doing all kinds of stuff. And Kim picked the 10 of swords as her micro death card. So we've got another swords card there. And she says that this person and this card just feels defeated. <laughs> absolutely defeated. But to move forward and to grow um, after hitting rock bottom or painful experience, right, that you've got to experience the transformation. You've got to find the turning point and look for the thing that is going to serve you in the long run and have that new experience that you are meant to step into into. Uh, and a reminder that even in the darkest, hardest of moments, there's the potential for growth and transformation. So even when you feel like it is the true death for you, that there are opportunities um, for transformation to rise and to keep moving, uh, even when it doesn't feel that way. So that's a great reminder from Kim on that one. Naomi, she is our marketing assistant on Team TSE. And Naomi picked the chariot card as her uh, representation of a micro death. So again, micro deaths are these little moments that are essentially deaths that we don't stop to grieve in the same way we would uh, a true death, right? Uh, and when we don't stop to grieve them, we don't see 
what's possible. We don't see the next door always opening, or we don't close the loop on that part of our life and that story to truly step into whatever is next here. Uh, And Naomi shares with us that, you know, you make a choice, you commit to a path and you just got to ride, ride. Like you got to go on that destination, right? The decision propels you forward and you got to see it through. And there's no time to entertain other scenarios. So truly like moving away from the thing that was there before, moving away from that previous expectation that that instance the previous version of yourself and just stepping like a full body yes into the next thing um and that this card also can embody uh regret from a shadow perspective so if you catch yourself thinking uh that you could have made a different choice right and that though there's a micro death in that as well having that that con those conflicting thoughts like did i do the right thing is there a regret there um, and choosing to move forward. I love tarot. See how we can use tarot in so many interesting ways. Like all I did was ask the question, what card represents a micro death to you? And we got so many different types of answers from our team members here and a lot of food for thought. So make sure you share with us on social media, go find a clip of this podcast or a post on social and share what yours is in the comments. We can take a look. Uh, Kiara Boggs, one of our astrology teachers, she chose the fool, which is so interesting. And actually, Kiara and I had a delightful conversation, well, a very short text conversation about this, where she read the rest of the magazine. And she said, everybody else picked all the like, quote unquote, hard cards. And here I am with the fool. <laughs> it's like, that's so you though, Kiara. Um, and yeah, so with the with the fool here, I, you know, this like considering coming full circle, like that it's actually can be, can be joyful to have come full circle. Like it can be a joyful celebration to leave something behind or to move into a new level, like the next step that that doesn't have to be a moment that is hard. And also though, that grief can also look like joy and celebration. So I love that from Kiara that, you know, we can change our mindset around what that has to look like. And with the symbolism that's in this card, and there's the little dog at the heels of the fool, um, Kiara is reminding us too that there's always support, right? You've got support there. Do you get nervous? Absolutely. But with this new opportunity is excitement. And that that's the thing that Kiara finds the point that we should lean into. And I love that perspective. And of course, it's very Kira. So if you know her, if you're in our astrology class, you know, let us know, say hi to her <laughs> in the comments, wherever you're taking note of this. Um, and if you're listening or whatever, there are no comments, you know, just go tell her that you heard this or you read her bit in the magazine and how delighted you are by her fool choice because I'm delighted by it. All right, Patty, she's a coach in our mastermind. And uh, Patty picked the tower. And she said that this most relates to her most, this relates to her most recent experiences of micro deaths where things ended in such a way that it felt like she was just experiencing the ensuing aftershocks of an earthquake, you know, that went on and on. And I love that sort of thought process because I think so much of life when we make a decision or something comes to an end, there are these aftershocks that we don't take into account for and then they keep coming and they make us question everything. So I love that Patty called that out in this card here Um, and that there's like the original moment, which is the original earthquake and then everything that comes after it. It breaks everything down, shakes everything up, but then there's room you can rebuild for the new foundation. So that's such a great, like I am, I love thinking about that and where in my life that something has happened that was necessary. And I second guessed myself because of the aftershocks, which I think can really be looked at as just the completion of the loop, right? The completion of the cycle. All right. And our last one, Kelly Soroka, she's one of our holistic witchery teachers along with me and Anna. And she chose judgment as her card. Um, and so Kelly said that she thinks a micro death death is like this idea of letting go of something dear and familiar um, and feeling the grief that goes along with that. And that judgment 
uh, allows or asks to really explore this release of identity. So a stage of life or a belief, and it depicts the joy of becoming someone new, right? So that, like similar to Kiera where, yeah, there's, there's stuff that ends, but there's joy in the new newness. There's joy in the new beginning and stepping fully into that role. And Kelly reminds us too, that letting the grief move through you is important. So you can embrace the future and its possibilities, right? Um, so leverage the grief into a brilliant, beautiful you and the new thing that's to come. Uh, micro deaths. I can't wait to get that episode out to you. If you have questions about that topic, be sure to read the Stay Magic um, free digital magazine we've got. But here we have, you know, we had Judgment, Tower, Fool, Chariot, the Ten of Swords, the Nine of Wands, the Three of Swords, and the Eight of Cups. And all of these cards can be interpreted in so many different ways. And what I love here is how our team of people who are you know, seasoned tarot readers and intuitives in their own rights, no matter what they do here at the Sisters Enchanted, uh, really took like story and their personal relationship and experience. And they took the cards and cast uh, meaning with them, right? And that's that's the power of tarot. The power of tarot isn't in memorization. The power of tarot is your relationship to the card, the story, and how those stories tie into the people who are hearing them and what it does for them and what one little piece of information can change for somebody. So today, think about in your life, like where you have maybe not stopped to close the loop or felt the pause of an ending and how that ending made space for whatever came next in your life, even if it felt confusing or hard at the time, but acknowledging it as like a little death, a little death in your life, a moment in time that had to be put to rest for something else to pop up. Um, you know, which card tells that story for you? We'd love to hear about it and and help you on your tarot journey. And there's a prompt for you. So go, you know, think about that. All right, y'all, that is it for today's episode. Some food for thought for sure. Pull out your tarot cards and grab your copy of the Stay Magic magazine. It is free. There's so much goodness in there. And that is just some of the goodness that we have to offer in this summer's edition. And it's not too late to get it and do some of the tips or ideas for midsummer, the longest day of the year either. And you'll find that in the magazine as well. All right. I guess that is it. Until next time. Thanks for listening. And we appreciate you being here. Go get your tarot cards out. Have some fun with them because, you know, everything should be fun. And until next time, I hope that you have an enchanted rest of your day ahead. If you liked this episode of the Expedition to Soul podcast, please rate, review, subscribe. If you're listening on Apple podcasts, it will really help us spread everyday magic, intention, and intuition to the masses and helps us so much as a small business. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. There are new episodes every Tuesday and astro forecasts for the week ahead every Friday. If there's any topics you'd want to hear, anything you want us to dive deeper into, shoot us an email at magic at the sisters And as always, thank you so much for listening and being part of the community here at the sisters enchanted and we'll see you in the next episode.